Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, and welcome to our chairman chat with the Honorable Dr. Richard Newton, the mayor of Collierville, Texas. Dr. Newton is currently the mayor of Collierville, Texas, and has had the distinction of being elected mayor of Collierville on five separate occasions and being elected to the Collierville City Council place two twice and Collierville City Council place four twice. He is currently the chairman of the Collierville Tax Increment Financing District Board of Directors, that's a mouthful, and vice president of the Collierville Economic Development Corporation and the Collierville Crime Control and Prevention District. He is on the board of directors of the Collierville Chamber of Commerce and a member of the Collierville Lions Club. And for all of you Texas A&M Aggies out there, you will be happy to know that Dr. Newton holds a Bachelor's of Science, a Master's of Science degrees in Electrical Engineering, and a PhD from Texas A&M University. Dr. Newton is a registered professional engineer in the state of Texas, a certified project management professional, PMP, and a licensed commercial pilot. Dr. Newton, Mayor of Colleyville, Honorable Mr. Newton, when do you have time to do anything? with that incredible bio and that incredible resume. Thanks for joining me uh, to have this nice chat to talk about mayoral leadership here in Texas. Well, Colonel West, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Now, well, first of all, let's kind of give everyone, because not only will this uh, be seen on Facebook Live here in the state of Texas, it'll be seen all over the country. So kind of give everyone a little orientation on Colleyville, Texas. It is just west of Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. But kind of give us a short uh, demographic background and characteristics of Colleyville. Yeah, Colleyville is a small town. We're approximately 27,000 people just west of uh, DFW Airport, a little bit closer to Fort Worth. Uh, perfect location for uh, people that do a lot of traveling. In fact, that's one reason I moved here because of the location, because it, it was at that time pretty rural and it's still very low density, uh, large lot size, very high quality primarily a residential community, but we do have quite a bit of commercial too. We have one state highway running through town, State Highway 26, which by the way, has been under construction. So it's been being uh, improved and just about complete. Uh, we're happy for that. Uh, but it's uh, very highly educated people, uh, pretty conservative people, pretty faith-based uh, uh, value system with people that live here. Uh, so it's a wonderful community. It uh, kind of has that small town atmosphere as one of the safest cities in Texas. I've uh, been first of many times for the safest city in the Metroplex for sure. So it's a wonderful place to live, high quality of life. Now, when you look at all the incredible economic growth and opportunity and influx of population into mm -hmm. the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, have you seen an increase there in Colleyville as far as your population? Well, Colleyville is uh, fairly unique. Uh, Colleyville is known for our large lots, and I, I say low density. What that means is larger lots and uh, so fewer density of people in the houses. And uh, that's what the community wants. In fact, I, I see that as one of the critical success factors of Colleyville. Uh, that's why people want to be here. It's very high quality of life. They have nice uh, amenities, nice uh, parks and open spaces. and. And actually, I think that's been a very big advantage for us during this pandemic. The fact that we have so much open space and, uh, and, and less density of people here. Well, without a doubt. Now, when you talk about the success of Colleyville, kind of give us an understanding of your leadership philosophy of governance there in Colleyville. And let's talk about some of the initiatives that you have there. And one of the key things is, what's your approach to, to, to budget management there for the city of Colleyville? I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, first, let me go back to the fundamental, the basics. Uh, the only reason I'm in office and choose to be here is to, to do the best we can for Colleyville and the community and the citizens and the business. So it, it, I truly mean this when I say, and I think you can see it from my actions uh, that we've taken, that every decision we make is gonna be taken in the best interest of the citizen. Uh, not anything else, uh, no other objectives in mind, but make Collierville the best place there is and do everything the citizens need done to meet their need from a, the government provides services. And when we talk about the pandemic, I'll get to that in a minute, but services provide, I mean, uh, government provides services and we view services our number one priority to our citizens, highest quality possible. 
Uh, and you mentioned financial. So uh, we've got a wonderful council right now. We're, we're a conservative, physically conservative bunch of people. And so our policy literally is to only raise enough money and only set budgets that need money to provide services that we need. So we've been very blessed. I say Colleyville is blessed. We're all actually blessed in this whole Metroplex and in Texas because we've been in a very uh, favorable economic climate for a long time. I think Texas is doing the right things. Uh, and so our property values have been going up. And you know, Colleyville, they go up 7 to 9% a year, like clockwork every year. So, you know, a lot of government just leave the tax rate the same. And if you leave the tax rate the same, I'm talking about property, bad valor property tax rate. Then if your property goes value, uh, values go up 8%, guess what? Citizens get a, a bill that's 8% higher than the previous right. year. So every year that I've been back in office, uh, we reduced the tax rate. The last uh, two consecutive years, we've reduced the tax rate enough uh, that we've hit the, what we used to call effective tax rate is now termed the no new revenue tax rate, which means if property values went up 8%, we reduced the tax rate enough to offset that increase in the citizen's property tax bill. So their tax bill didn't go up. City tax, <laughs> can't speak for county and all, the school and everything else. Uh, so that's called the no new revenue tax rate. Now that's very hard to do. Um, very few cities can accomplish that. And the only way you can do that is run the city very efficiently. And our, I think our city, we have wonderful uh, city staff members and city leadership. I'm talking about the management team. Uh, this place runs like a small business. So I've been an executive in large businesses and I've started and run small businesses. And small businesses make quick decisions. They, uh, they extract the most value out of every dollar that they spend uh, for the objective they're under. Our objective is to meet the needs of our citizens and improve Colville. And so that is truly done here. And because we spend money very efficiently, we cut no programs. In fact, we grow programs, but we keep so far in the last two years, and we actually set a policy to each year set the no new revenue tax rate, if at all possible. You know, if you can't, then you should understand why, and you should be able to tell your citizens what you need to raise revenue for, and that's what you're going to spend it on, so they have an opportunity to say yay or nay on that. Well, you're absolutely right, and I think one of the critical things you brought up in your response there was that you have that business acumen, and that's how you look at it, effectiveness and efficiency. And then also one of the things that I've always harped on is how we need to have more governments move away from this baseline budget mentality. Yeah. Of there's always going to be an increase of spending, and so if there's an increase of spending, there has to be an increase in the taxation and get back to a zero-based budgeting model which says okay we're going to raise based upon what we really need to have to be effective to be efficient to provide those services and so i want to highlight and let's talk about the incredible i think it's a courageous decision that you made you were the first if i'm correct city and the state of texas to say hey we're, we're opening back up we're, we're getting back to how things used to be and i think that that is critical because i don't see where government has the right to be able to tell individual businesses and business owners that, uh, you know, we're going to choose and decide who is essential and who is not. So talk to us about the decision that you and the city council there in Colleyville made to step out on faith, to step out on principle and say, Colleyville, Texas is back open. Mm -hmm. So th the reason we did that, in fact, by the way, I've been told by many people that we were the first that didn't even enter my mind when we were going through this process, literally. Uh, but what we were, of course, uh, we have our own emergency management plan uh, and we have put in place a pandemic management plan and we have uh, uh, activated our emergency operations center basically. So every day we're sitting in this room talking through all the issues, looking at data. So I'm an engineer by training. I'm going to look at data. I'm going to have, when I make decisions, I want to know what's the basis for that decision, what's our objective in making the decision, and what's our basis, and then do it. And uh, so, we were looking at all the data. And so the objective truly from any government shutting down operations like was done, whether it be the US or Texas or Tarrant County or the city of Collierville, was to ensure that we were able to provide medical services and hospital beds and the equipment needed uh, at the time of the peak of the pandemic. 
at the beginning of the pandemic, there was very little data. Uh, there were uh, very uh, large predictions made. Uh, it turned out to be inaccurate, thankfully so. But that's what the data was. So that led to this reaction of the government because the, the data scared everybody to death on are we going to have enough hospital rooms available. So we were tracking that very carefully. By the way, I really appreciate Governor Abbott. He's done a fantastic job in ensuring uh, changing things, working with the hospitals and the CEOs to ensure we had capacity. But at the time we made the decision, here's the data that we were looking at. Uh, so there was approximately 5,800 hospital beds available in Tarrant County. 50% of them were being used. 50% of them of that capacity was available. Of the ventilators, which is a very hot topic at the time, only 20% of the ventilators were in use. And so you can look at any category of hospital beds, general hospital beds, ICU beds, there was plenty of capacity available uh, at that time. So from that means what happened? We met our objective. The government's met our objective in ensuring that there was no hospital and medical capacity available to handle the medical needs of people that did get the virus at that time. And that was just about right at the, at the peak. So that was the maximum time. And so that said, hey, we met that objective. Uh, in Colleyville, we have, we're a small town. We have a lot of uh, local small businesses, many of them locally owned. And, and most of the large businesses in town uh, were open because they were essential businesses. So it was the small businesses that were just getting hurt dramatically. And so we said, it's time to start opening up because we've met that objective. There's plenty of hospital capacity available. Uh, and so we did that. And we did that in a way, and this is, this been a lot of controversy. It was interesting from the news media mainly. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I, re I remember. Yeah, every time I talk about this, I say our strategy is we are going to follow the guidance uh, and directives of the President of the United States. We're going to follow the CDC guidelines and we're going to follow the executive orders of Governor Abbott, period. That's what we're going to do. So when we opened up, the way we did it was entirely consistent with Governor Abbott's executive order. Other people just didn't perceive it that way. But we interpreted that order in a way that was uh, the best it could be for Colleyville. And so we opened up with uh, uh, certain restrictions. Uh, and for instance, you had to have appointments. Uh, the, governor's or, uh, the governor's order at that time basically said non-essential businesses were not open to the general public. So we opened it not to the general public, but for appointments and scheduled events limited in size where the businesses knew who was coming so they can make adequate preparation for distancing and everything else. And in fact, the governor agreed with this. And so, and then one week later, uh, the governor started open up himself in a very similar manner in which we did. So uh, we well, without, a, without a doubt, again, you applied logic, you applied reason, and you studied and looked at the data and the statistics so I would say, uh, as we get ready to close out, would you yeah. recommend that other mayors uh, of, you know, maybe the smaller cities or the smaller counties even start doing exactly what you have done instead of a, you know, overarching carpet bombing, cookie cutter type of approach, allow people to do exactly what you did and make the right decision for your community? Yeah, well, let me say something I, I neglected to say that's very fundamental to all this. Our decision process was, I agree with you, governments, governments shouldn't make all the decisions. Uh, we are a free people and we have rights. And uh, so we were trying to push those decisions down to the citizens and the businesses so they could participate in those decisions. They usually make better decisions than we do most of the time, actually. And so that was the philosophy of trying to open up, opening up with certain parameters so you maintain the safety requirements and guidelines. I mean, I preach those, every, all of us preach those CDC physical distancing and safety guidelines all the time. Uh, so people uh, usually take their health very seriously, so they're going to do those things. And in our city, we have a great citizenry, and they all do those things. So I have, oh, I have very much confidence in our citizens, and they continue to do, to do those things as we open up. But back to your question now. 
Should other people do it? Well, since that time, you know, a week seems like uh, six months in this time. <laughs> you know, a day seems like a week because things are moving so quickly. Uh, the, the governor actually, on a statewide level, has opened up all non-essential businesses to 25% occupancy. He's opened up, uh, you know, a big deal with us is we opened up uh, restaurant patios. He's done that to full capacity, restaurants to 25% capacity inside. And so actually that opening up uh, has started for, for salons and nails and barbershops and stuff. We had opened up on an appointment basis uh, that they have now been opened up on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So he followed really a similar tack to what we were doing. So that's already in place uh, for the whole Texas at now. The only thing that's closed now is gyms and uh, massage parlors, basically. Massage and gym where there's, uh, and I, I think we opened up uh, small uh, studios that for yoga and things, but uh, didn't quite get that from the governor. Uh, but I, I, then that will happen Friday. So Friday, uh, excuse me, not Friday, Monday. Monday, all those will open up to 25%. So I think we're on that track now where we're, we're moving ahead and we're still watching the data. The data's looking good. You know, Texas is just different. You know, New York and New Jersey have half of the cases in the United States. Yeah. Texas has 50% less death per capita than New York. And I say that just to say, Texas is a different place than New York. So New York may do different things. So you need to make these decisions based on your community and what's going on in your, your community. Absolutely. And, that's, the, that's the whole key role of leadership is to be able to tailor your decisions to, you know, your area, your city, your community, or in the military to your unit. So I just want to say thank you so very much honorable dr richard newton for spending time with us where can people follow you and uh, the website for collierville texas and you know can they come over and you know have a nice little sit down at one of your restaurants one of your uh, business establishments absolutely we have wonderful restaurants uh, collierville.com is the city's website so all the information about all of this these things we talked about we also keep a list of uh, all the restaurants and things that are open in town and so they can see that. But we have uh, a wonderful place to come and uh, I'm very thankful for that. We're a very, very blessed community. Well, we want to thank you, Mayor Newton, for leading the way and uh, for being a vanguard here in Texas because we all know that when the Lone Star shines brighter, it shines for the entire United States of America. And I think Collierville has helped the Lone Star to shine exceedingly bright in this uh, COVID-19 issue that we're facing. So God bless you and thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you, Colonel West, I appreciate it. Yes, sir.